Uh, good afternoon. I would like to call this public meeting of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York to order. Uh, at the end of the regular public meeting, we will be going into um, executive session to discuss personnel matters. Uh, and after that discussion, we will reconvene in public session uh, after the uh, executive uh, session. The meetings of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York are open to the public and the Board welcomes the interests of those who attend. The public has ample opportunity to communicate with the Board. Public hearings on the Board's policy calendar are scheduled one week prior to the Board's regular meetings and members of the public who wish to communicate with the Board are invited to express their views at such public hearings. Furthermore, the board holds additional public hearings each year in all of the five boroughs at which members of the public may also speak. In addition, written communications to the board are routinely distributed to all trustees. The board can, must carry out the functions assigned to it by law and therefore cannot tolerate conduct by members of the public that disrupts its meetings. In the event of disruptions, including noise, which interferes with board discussion, after appropriate uh, warnings, I will ask the security staff to remove uh, disruptive persons. The university may seek uh, disciplinary and or criminal sanctions against persons who engage in conduct that violates the university's rules or state laws, which prohibit interference with the work of public bodies. Uh, I would now like to request that everyone take a moment to mute your cell phones or, uh, or your Blackberry. CUNY TV is transmitting the public sessions of this afternoon's meeting of the Board of Trustees live on cable channel 75. As usual, CUNY TV is transmitting the public sessions of this afternoon's meeting of the Board. Uh, it's also being webcast live at www.cuny.edu uh, slash live stream, providing service worldwide via personal computers and mobile devices. Uh, the public session of this board meeting will be available as a podcast within 24 hours and can be accessed uh, versus the CUNY website. Uh, later on uh, in this meeting, Trustee Rita DiMartino will report uh, the names and affiliations of student honorees. Uh, but I would like to note the continuing winning trend developed at CUNY in recent years with just a few examples. In the last 10 years, 19 CUNY students have won Barry M. Goldwater scholarships given to undergraduates excelling in the sciences, mathematics, and engineering. This scholarship provides a maximum of $7,500 per year in educational, uh, in, to cover educational expenses. Two CUNY students were selected this year. In the past uh, 10 years, 85 CUNY students have won prestigious National Science Foundation graduate research fellowships, which offer funding up to $132,000 for three years of graduate study in the STEM disciplines. Including the 17 CUNY students who won this year, the university has cumulatively the highest number of student winners of any public university uh, in the Northeast. Uh, CUNY students have won a total of seven Math for America fellowships in the past three years. This highly selective five-year program provides a $100,000 stipend to students committed to teaching math in public schools. This year, CUNY had uh, four winners. Uh, I want to thank the faculty and, and staff of the university uh, for their careful work with these st uh, CUNY student uh, award winners. I'd like to thank Trustee Rita DiMartino uh, and uh, University Student Senate Chair Mohammed Arshad for participating in the Somos El Futuro events in Albany uh, over the weekend of March 21 through March 23. I would also like to thank Trustee Rita DiMartino for representing CUNY at its Big Apple Jobs Fair on Friday, April 4th, held at the Jacob Javits Conference Center. 
Uh, this is a great program that brings CUNY students in contact with prospective employers. I want to thank all the trustees, presidents, members of the chancellery, students, and faculty who attended uh, this important event. I would like to thank Trustee Charles Shorter for representing CUNY at the Association of Governing Boards 2014 National Conference on Trusteeship in Orlando from April uh, 12th to April 14th. And I would like to thank Trustee Valerie Beal for leading an event in cooperation with the CUNY Black Male Initiative and the Office of Student Affairs, taking place on Tuesday, May, 5th, May 13th from 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at Hunter College's Roosevelt House. This invitation-only event entitled Ensuring the Promise, a, dia a dialogue on college and career readiness and college success will feature panel discussions addressing what it means to be college and career ready for the 21st century. Uh, our thanks to trustee and professor Terence Martell and the University Faculty Senate uh, for organizing with the help of Vice Chancellor Jillian Small the third annual poster day show showcasing the research of over 100 CUNY and SUNY undergraduates at the Legislative Office Building in Albany on April uh, 1st. Uh, Professor Martell, would you like to say a few words about that event? Thank you, Jesse. I would. Uh, this was a, uh, an opportunity that came our way uh, because of our relationship with the SUNY uh, Faculty Senate. They invited us to participate in what is essentially an undergrad undergraduate research uh, forum for CUNY and SUNY uh, students. Uh, it highlighted research at CUNY, undergraduate research at CUNY, and in that regard, it was, it's consistent with our strategic uh, plan. Uh, as, as the chair indicated, working through Vice Chancellor Small's office, we were able to uh, solicit participation from virtually every undergraduate program in the university. Uh, Vice Chancellor Hershenson also was helpful in arranging for or connecting the individual uh, students back to their senators and assembly uh, persons so that we made the political connection and demonstrated to the community, uh, the political community, what we say, what we say CUNY produces research qualified undergraduate students. On a personal level, it was an extraordinary, extraordinary experience. Anytime you, anytime you put forth CUNY students, the result is almost always excellent. Uh, I, I met a, a young woman from the College of Staten Island, uh, Korshaw Ibrahim, and we had a wonderful conversations about drugs, counteracting pathological human tau toxin effects. And you can imagine how long that conversation lasted, uh, <laughs> but it was wonderful while it did. And, and this young woman uh, sat at, over lunch and explained how hard she was working and how she's going to get her MD and her PhD. So we are going to be calling her Dr. Doctor in the very, very near future. But it's, an, it's, it's just another example of why we sit in this room, right? We help young men and women do their best work. And I was proud to be up there. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, I would also like to congratulate Trustee Carol Robles Roman, who was recently appointed president and CEO of Legal Momentum a nonprofit enterprise that advances the rights of women and girls through legal action and innovative uh, public policy uh, suggestions. Uh, the board held its Staten Island borough hearing on Monday, March 24th. Trustee Rita DiMartino chaired the hearing that was also attended by trustees Carol Robles Roman and Mohammed Arshad, members of the Chancellery and College of Staten Island interim uh, president, uh, William Fritz. The board held its Queens Borough meeting on Monday, April 28th. Trustee Wellington Chen chaired this hearing, which was also attended by Trustees Judah Gribbets and Mohammed Arshad, members of the Chancellery and the Queens College uh, presidents and the law school dean. A summary of these proceedings has been circulated to the trustees and the Chancellor's cabinet. Transcripts are available in the office of the uh, secretary. Uh, the next uh, borough hearing 
uh, will be held in the Bronx on Monday, June 23rd at Ostos uh, Community College. Finally, uh, it is with great sadness that we note the passing of Basil Alexander Patterson, uh, who died on uh, April 16th. Mr. Patterson was a long-standing supporter of CUNY uh, and uh, of our educational mission. He was a former chairperson of the Friends of CUNY and an early supporter of the Percy Ellis Sutton uh, Search for Education and Knowledge, the, known as the SEEK uh, uh, program. He advocated for the well-being of this university consistently during his tenure as Secretary of State of New York, State Senator, Deputy Mayor, uh, and private citizen. We express our deepest uh, condolences to the Patterson family. May I now call on Trustee Valerie Beal to announce college and faculty honors. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Two CUNY faculty members just won 2004 Guggenheim Fellowships. They are College of Staten Island Associate Professor Patricia Smith and Brooklyn College Madeline Leventhal Wren Distinguished Lecturer Marjorie Wheelish. Congratulations. Two City College faculty members were named 2014 Fulbright Scholars. They are Associate Professors Adienke Akinsulur Smith and Tatiana Klein. In addition, Professor Mahish Lakshman was awarded a fellowship from the Japan Society for the Promotion of Science and will present a lecture at Tohoku University. Congratulations. Bronx Community College's Licensed Practical Nursing Program was named Best in New York State by practicalnursing.org with 100% of the students passing their licensing exam. And Bronx Community College music professor Thomas Cipolo had a new choral composition which premiered at Carnegie Hall on April 28th. Congratulations. Brooklyn College political science professor Jean Theo Harrison won an NAACP National Image Award for her book titled The Rebellious Life of Miss Rosa Park. Congratulations to them. CUNY Law School ranked fourth in the nation for best clinical training and eighth nationwide for most diverse school by the US News and World Report. The school also ranked sixth in the nation for best public interest law schools by the national jurors. Furthermore, Dean Michelle Anderson was elected a member of the American Law Institute and appointed to the Victim Services Subcommittee of the Response Systems to Adult Sexual Assault Crimes Panel by the U.S. Secretary of Defense. Hunter College Silberman School of Social Work Dean Jacqueline Mondros was elected president of the National Association of Deans and Directors of Schools of Social Work. LGBT Social Science and Roosevelt House Public Policy Center professor Marcus Bedell won a Fulbright Regents University Scholar Award presented to one person each year. And distinguished professor Nancy Fawner has been appointed to the National Academy of Sciences panel on the integration of immigrants into American society. And finally, LaGuardia Community College math faculty members, Dr. Faye Betney, Dr. Malini Kurila, and Dr. Mangola Kotara were awarded a three-year National Science Foundation grant to develop a statistics course with applications in civic and environmental issues. Congratulations to all the recipients. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Uh, may I now call on Trustee Rita DiMartino to announce student and alumni honors. Thank you. Uh, Macaulay Honors College at Queens College student Lauren Blachorski and Hunter College student Nicola Gabrielle Crefall are among 283 students nationwide who won Barry M. Goldwater scholarships 
which provide up to a maximum of $47,500 per year in educational expenses. Congratulations. <coughs> York College graduate and current Yale University student, Robert Fernandez, is one of 30 recipients of the Paul and Daisy Soros Fellowships for New Americans, which provide tuition and living expenses of up to $90,000 over two years. Congratulations. Four CUNY Community College students are among 85 students nationwide selected for the Jack Kent Cooke Foundation Transfer Scholarships. They are Pei Shan Chen and Rachel Lazar of Kingsborough Community College, Christina Mihalisku of LaGuardia Community College, and Yu Ting Chen of Queensborough Community College. The scholarship provides support to qualifying students with significant financial need of up to $30,000 per year for two years. Congratulations. 19 CUNY students have received Fulbright study grants and 17 were granted National Science Foundation graduate research fellowships. All 19 names and their CUNY affiliations will be listed on the record of the board meeting. Congratulations to all. 15 CUNY students are among 1,100 undergraduates nationwide to receive Benjamin A. Gilman Summer Scholarships. All 15 names and their CUNY affiliations will be listed on the record of this board meeting. Congratulations to all. Four CUNY students received Math for America fellowships, which provide a full tuition scholarship and a stipend of up to $100,000 over five years. They are Andre Brady of Medgar Evers College, Matthew D. Andrade of Queens College, Iskander Kapkayev of Brooklyn College, and Danny Ramos of Hunter College. Congratulations. Macaulay Honors College at Hunter College students, Emily Apple and Andrew Marcus were selected for the 2014 New York City Urban Fellows Program. Congratulations. John Jay College graduate Chantel Atlam is the sole winner of the 2014 W. Burkhardt Turner Fellowship of Stony Brook University, which pro provides more than $100,000 in full tuition and a $15,000 annual stipend, among other benefits. Congratulations. Eight CUNY students were awarded Jeanette K. Watson Fellowships. They are Caitlin Carkerham of Brooklyn College, Fariha Hussein and Keishel Stocks of City College, Stacy Morales, Monero Greville, and Vincent Palmieri of John Jay College, Janitza Medina of Lehman College, and Anita Torasian of Queens College. Congratulations. Graduate Center Urban Education Program alum, Chris Emden, was named a White House STEM Diversity and Access Champion of Change. Congratulations. Brooklyn College alumna, Annie Baker, who just won a Pulitzer Prize for her play, The Flick, also won a Guggenheim Award recently, making her the fourth Brooklyn College Playwriting Program alum who have won this award. Congratulations. The Baruch College MFE team was fourth among the 52 teams at the 2014 Rotman International Trading Competition. Team members were John Han, Captain, John Hua, Dustin Moy, Fu Bo Shi, Bo Yuang, and Peng Wu. Congratulations. Bronx Community College BMI Student Leadership Academy student Mamadou Diallo was recognized by the National Society of Collegiate Scholars magazine. Congratulations. <coughs> Four Hunter College alumni have been named commissioners by uh, Mayor Bill de Blasio. They are Mitchell Silver, class of 93, as commissioner of the Department of Parks and Recreation, Tom Finkelpearl, 
class of 83, as commissioner of the Department of Cultural Affairs, Cynthia Lopez, class of 89, as commissioner of the Office of Media and Entertainment, and Donna Corrado, DSW 13, as commissioner of the Department for the Aging. Congratulations. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Uh, you have uh, on the table and in the trustees' calendar book a list of the grants and gifts received by the university since the February 24, 2014 uh, meeting. Uh, I would now like to call on, on uh, uh, Interim Chancellor William Kelly to present his report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me begin with the city budget. The mayor, as most of you know, will be issuing his fiscal 2015 executive budget on Thursday, May 8th. Over the past several weeks, we have been in regular discussion with City Hall and the OMB regarding the university's operating and capital needs. Um, mayor de Blasio has declared edu education to be the cornerstone of his master plan for the city's future. In response to that call, the university submitted a funding request for a new initiative <coughs> entitled Educating a Competitive Workforce for the 21st Century. The plan's main goal is to ensure that CUNY students and graduates are well equipped to compete in the changing economy of STEM-related professions. Among the items included in our proposal are the additions of hundreds of new faculty, a significant enhancement in academic and career counseling services, an expansion of the very successful CUNY START and ASAP programs. We believe that the mayor will include a significant investment in CUNY as part of his budget. Uh, preliminary discussions suggest that OMP is particularly focused on the pipeline and STEM initiatives that we have proposed and on a variety of community college-based projects. Conversations uh, are ongoing. We'll keep everyone posted as further developments emerge. We're also working regularly with the City Council regarding capital and operating needs. Those discussions were reflected in the City Council's response to the Mayor's preliminary budget. That proposal includes two CUNY-based initiatives, the first an Academic Achievement Award, modeled both on the former Valone Scholarship Program and on a proposal advanced by the University Student Senate. If funded, this program would award $800 annually on a merit basis, would be available to full-time students who graduated from a New York City high school with at least an 80 GPA and who maintain a B average. The second proposal for the university called for the full restoration, that was 3.6 million all in, in funding for the CUNY prep po program. A copy of the city council's response to the mayor's budget is in all of your packets. Um, <clears throat> we continue beyond the budget issues to work closely with City Council. We've met with uh, Council Speaker uh, Mark Viverito at her office with members of the Chancellery and all of the community college presidents had an opportunity to speak with um, uh, Melissa Mark Viverito about ongoing initiatives at the colleges and to solicit and seek her continued support. Further, uh, on, February, or on April 25th, we met um, with the Committees on Higher Education and Civil Rights to discuss faculty diversity. Those who testified included uh, Ostos Community College <coughs> President Matos Rodriguez, <coughs> CUNY Vice Chancellor for Human Resources Ginger Waters, University Dean for Recruitment and Diversity Jennifer Rubain, the Director of CUNY's Latino Faculty Initiative Arlene Torres, Graduate Center Interim Provost Louise Lenahan, and Director of the CUNY Pipeline Program, Irene Morris and Montcure. Copies of their testimony are also included in your packets. Two brief items on the state side. First, trustee designates Barry Schwartz and James Molinaro are scheduled for Senate confirmation meetings tomorrow. We anticipate their arrival to join this body and look forward to it not the least because it will ease some of the burden that so many of you have, uh, have shouldered in a time of um, not full registration here. Um, and we continue our discussions with members of the legislature regarding several matters still pending on budget allocations. 
Federal side, I'm sure you've all been following the news about the White House recent report um, on um, the task force to protect students from sexual assault. It's a website that you can consult, notalone.gov. The concern, of course, is to track enforcement and provide <coughs> victims with information. We have been ahead of the curve, and I want to acknowledge and thank uh, Vice Chancellor Schaefer for that work in ensuring that our policies are sensitive to this important issue. We continue to align those policies with government um, regulation and new policy, and we will continue to monitor the techniques both for enforcement and education. University news, I want to particularly highlight the 12th consecutive CUNY Citizenship Now call-in. This is a project that, as you know, we do in conjunction with the Daily News to provide citizenship counseling to new immigrants. It's become a great success. Um, most of the elected officials of both federal state, and, uh, federal, state and city have attended one or another session. In this uh, iteration of the program, we've already counseled more than 10,000 callers, bringing the total of people we've helped to well over 130,000. My thanks to Vice Chancellor Hershenson for making Citizenship Now the great success that it is. I want to take special note of the National Academy of Sciences report on the, court, uh, the causes and consequences of the high rate of incarceration in the United States. This a report uh, chaired by, uh, by Jeremy Travis. It's attracted an enormous amount of attention around the nation. You may have seen uh, the account, uh, accounts in the Washington Post or uh, Jeremy's uh, performance on, uh, on PBS the other night, NPR, you name it, we've been there, Huffington Post, BBC. Jeremy, thank you for your good, great good work on this extremely important subject. Many successes on grant fronts to note as well. Uh, Robin Hood has, uh, has extended its support for ASP and at home, uh, at college, uh, to the tune of $1 million and a million point two five. Petrie has just recently given us over a million to provide students with emergency funds. It's the first time they've extended their support to include community colleges. The Jewish Foundation for the Education of Women uh, is finalizing a gift to expand the CUNY Service Corps to include a summer initiative at Queens and at Lehman College. Department of Labor has announced that as part of a grant to the city, CUNY will receive roughly $2 million over the next three years to further develop our early college and career schools, that model that sometimes is referred to as, as PTEC. Our cross-campus initiatives that this uh, has been reported to this body in the past proceed with great elan. We've had three meetings of the Faculty Leadership Academy, uh, and the only complaint I've received is that the meetings are not long enough. I can assure you that's the first time I've received that complaint. Um, 83 community college faculty members applied for the new Chancellor's Research Fellows. Uh, extraordinarily strong applications. Fellowships will be awarded to 19 faculty from five community colleges. Those award members will also participate in a series of meetings and seminars. Calculus boot camps, one of the difficult gateway courses <coughs> that have stood in the way of a number of students pursuing careers in the STEM disciplines, will be held this August uh, at LaGuardia, CCNY, Lehman, Baruch, Brooklyn, and City Tech. We are very optimistic that this initiative will result in easier transit for students interested in those, um, in those majors. As part of the Performing Arts Collaborative, uh, Broadway performer, sort of seriously hip, too hip for me in some ways, Danny Hawk, the Urban Bush Women dance troupe, not too hip for me, Moises Kaufman and his Tectonic Theater Company have all agreed to participate in, as guest artists in our Performing Arts Collaborative. They will be working at Brooklyn, CSI, Lehman, CCNY, Kingsboro, and BMCC uh, as in, in residence. Want a particular thanks to uh, Professor Nassoff for spearheading this effort. Finally, let me note that in 11 days, we begin the commencement season and um, it's always the very best time of the year. And I want to take this opportunity to thank the trustees for making time in your very busy schedule to attend and to speak at these commencements. Um, I know it is an effort on your part, but it's deeply appreciated by the family, uh, friends, and certainly by the graduates themselves. So heartfelt thanks to all of you. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Are there questions or comments uh, on the President's report? 
All right. Seeing none, we'll, uh, we'll turn now to policy items uh, that require uh, us to vote. Uh, I will move the adoption of the Chancellor's University Report for May 5th, 2014. You'll find a copy of this report uh, at the trustees' table. May I have a second? Second. Are there questions uh, uh, on the Chancellor's uh, report? Uh, if not, are you uh, ready for the question? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? The Chancellor's uh, University Report uh, is adopted. <clears throat> uh, I will move the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of February 24, 2014. You'll find a copy of the draft minutes uh, at section two of your meeting books. May I have a second? Second. Uh, are there any <coughs> questions or suggestions for revising uh, those minutes uh, that you'll find, see in section two? Uh, if not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? The minutes uh, are adopted. We'll turn next uh, to uh, committee reports, uh, and I'd like to turn the chair over for a moment to, uh, to Philip Berry for the, uh, uh, for the Committee on Fiscal Affairs. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, committee Chair Joseph Loda, can you please present the items? I sure can, Mr. Chairman. Um, the Committee on Fiscal Affairs and the Subcommittee on Investments met in joint session on April 7, 2014. After approval of the minutes of the prior meeting on February 3rd, uh, the committee approves the following resolutions. And I warn everyone we have more resolutions than I have had since I've been on this uh, trustee board. Calendar item 3A is an omnibus <coughs> technology resolution authorizing the colleges to purchase mobile and desktop computers, servers, networking, telephone and telecommunications equipment, and cabling related peripheral devices, software maintenance, professional and other technology related services and training in accordance with the law and university regulations. Such purchases shall not exceed a total cost of $350 million through June 30th, 2019 and such amount shall be inclusive of the student technology fee. Any single proposed acquisition in a, in a one-time or recurring value of $5 million or more shall be excluded from this resolution and shall be subject to separate approval by the Board of Trustees. Mr. Chairman, I approve the, uh, and I, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3A. I'll second it. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed abstentions. Thank you, it carries. Next item. Calendar item 3B is a resolution authorized council to execute a university-wide agreement to provide maintenance and consumables for CUNY's existing fleet of Konica copiers. Such purchase shall not exceed $8.5 million for the period July 1, 2014 through June 30, 2019. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and the adoption of calendar item 3B. Thank you very much. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. It passes. Calendar item 3C is a resolution authorizing the university to choose vending services uh, to provide and operate and maintain snack and beverage vending equipment at some or all of the colleges in the central office in exchange for the payment of royalties and a commission on sales. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3C. Thank you very much. Is there a second to this? Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? It passes. Thank you very much. Please Calend continue. Calendar item 3D is a resolution authorized council to execute a contract on behalf of the university to provide a university-wide employee assistance program, EAP. Such purchase shall not exceed a total estimated value of $3 million for a three-year term and includes up to two one-year options for the university to renew in its best interest. The EAP will provide employees with a wide range of confidential and cost-effective programs, services, referrals, and or information designed to help the employees balance the needs of personal life with the requirements of work and to address personal problems that may affect an employee's work performance. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and the adoption of calendar item 3D. Thank you very much. Is there a second to that? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. It passes. 
Calendar item 3E is a resolution authorized council to execute a contract on behalf of Baruch College to purchase escalator maintenance services. Such purchase shall not exceed a total estimated cost of $220,000 for the first year of a five-year contract beginning FY 2014. Mr. Chairman, I definitely move the approval and adoption <laughs> of calendar item 3E. Does anyone joyfully second this? Second. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. <laughs> calendar <laughs> item three. We are glad to pass that item. Calendar item uh, three F, F is a resolution to authorize general counsel to execute a contract on behalf of Baruch College to provide creative services. The initial term shall be one year and such purchase shall not exceed a total estimated cost of $360,000. Baruch will use these services to provide uh, creative services for the rebranding of the college's Zicklin School of Business. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3F. Thank you very much. Is there a second to that? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? It passes. Next item. Calendar item 3G is a resolution authorizing the university to adopt a revised schedule of academic excellence fees by removing the maximum on the total amount of academic excellence fees charged for students in Baruch College's business programs, the financial engineering master's program, the public affairs master's program, corporate communications, industrial organization, psychology, and mental health counseling programs. Baruch College proposes to eliminate the maximum on the total of academic excellence fees charged to a student, thereby removing a disincentive for timely completion of a graduate degree. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3G. Uh, I'll second that. Any questions for the committee? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? That carries. Calendar item 3H is a resolution authorized council to execute a university-wide contract to purchase JSTOR Digital Library. Such purchase shall not exceed $2.5 million paid over five annual installments. The JSTOR or JSTOR Digital Library provides full text access to almost 2,000 journals and more than 900 publishers and is subscribed to be uh, by more than 8,000 institutions worldwide. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3H. Second that. Are there questions? All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions. That carries. Calendar item 3I is a resolution authorized general counsel to execute a university-wide contract to purchase electronic access to digital commons um, from B Press on behalf of the participating colleges. Such purchase shall not exceed $1.25 million payable in five annual installments. The university will use this contract with B Press, uh, a leading provider of hosted institutional repository services, to establish a university wide repository of faculty publications and research presentations graduate student work such as theses and dissertations and papers published while at the City University. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3I. I'll second that. Are there questions on 3I? Uh, if not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? That carries. Okay. Following the approval of uh, action item 3I, Vice President, uh, Vice Chancellor, excuse me, Sapienza, uh, gave a report on the 2014-15 New York State Adopted Budget. Following the Vice Chancellor's report, the Subcommittee on Investments was convened, and after approval of the minutes of the prior meeting, the University's Chief Investment Officer, Janet Crone, and a representative of Cambridge Associates gave a report on City University's spending policy, which led to formulating calendar item 3J, which is a resolution stating that the Board of Trustees has determined in accordance with the uh, City University spending policy, which is Exhibit uh, B to the investment policy, that it is prudent and appropriate to maintain an appropriation of 4.5% for the funds in the portfolio for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2015. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3J. Uh, I'll second that. Are there questions on the um, investment spending rate? Not all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? That's adopted. Following the spending deliberation, Senior Counsel Jane uh, Davis and University CIO Janet Crone gave a presentation on the repurposing of funds uh, for Brooklyn College and Lehman College representing 
calendar items 3K and 3L, uh, which I will present together. Calendar item 3K is a resolution authorizing the release of restrictions on various funds at Brooklyn College, and calendar item 3L is a resolution authorizing the release of restrictions on various funds at Lehman College. Uh, the City University Office of General Counsel and the Office of Budget and Finance have worked closely with the colleges in this repurposing effort and have reviewed the available donation instruments and other materials in support of these proposed changes. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and the adoption of calendar items 3K and 3L. I'll second those. Are there any questions on either of those items? If not, all in favor, please say aye. aye. Any aye. opposed? Abstentions? Those two items carry. Mr. Chairman, this concludes my report. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we'll turn next to the uh, Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration. May I call on Trustee Valerie Beal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will now present for the Board's approval the matters that the Board Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration considered at our meeting on April 7th. Item 4A updates the governance plan of Brooklyn College by providing that each school's promotion and tenure review committee shall meet and discuss candidates for promotion or tenure with the dean of the respective school prior to voting. In addition, the policy committee is given authority to establish standing committees and ad hoc committees. These amendments bring the plan into conformity with the policy council's bylaws and college practice and have been approved by the college policy council and are recommended by the president. Mr. Chair, I present item 4A for the board's approval. I'll second that. Are there questions on item 4A? If not, all in favor, please say aye. aye. Uh, any opposed? Abstentions? Uh, 4A carries. Item 4B reappoints Dr. Tilden Lamell as Commissioner of the CUNY Civil Service Commission for an additional six-year term commencing June 1, 2014 through May 31, 2020. The board previously reappointed Dr. Lamell on June 23, 2008 in accordance with Section 15.1A of the New York State <laughs> Civil Service Law. The reappointment of Dr. Lamell enables the university to continue to operate under the rules and regulations of its own Civil Service Commission as provided by the New York State <coughs> Education Law as governed by the New York State Civil Service Law. Mr. Chair, Chair, I present items 4B for the board's consideration. I'll second that. Are there uh, questions for the committee on item 4B? If not, all in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed abstentions? That carries. Item 4C authorizes the incorporation of the Stella and Charles Gutman Community College Foundation, Inc. Pursuant to the provisions for the not-for-profit corporation law of the state of New York and consents to the use of Stella and Charles Gutman Community College as part of the name of the foundation. The foundation is being formed to support and advance the educational and research activities of Gutman Community College by raising funds and making contributions and grants to the college. The Board Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration has reviewed this matter and recommends its approval. Mr. Chair, I present item 4C for the Board's consideration. I'll uh, second that. Are there questions on the, uh, uh, the college, Gutman Community College Foundation? Uh, if not, all in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? That item carries. Items 4D and 4E concern two naming opportunities at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, which I will present together. The monetary gifts associated with these namings total more than $400,000, and the Board Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration is pleased to recommend their approval. Mr. Chair, I present items 4D and 4E for the Board's consideration. Uh, I'll second those items. Uh, are there questions on either of these naming uh, opportunities? If not, all in favor, please say <coughs> aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Uh, uh, those items carry. Finally Vice, finally, Vice Chancellor Waters provided the committee with a brief report on two initiatives her office has undertaken, which I would like to share with the board. On April 24th, Vice Chancellor Waters' office sponsored a university-wide diversity reception 
a biennial event that recognizes members of the university community who exemplify the values of diversity and inclusion. This year, Professor Arlene Torres of Hunter College was honored by her stewardship of CUNY's Latino Faculty Initiative, which was established in 2006 to increase CUNY's outreach and recruitment efforts within the com Latino community <coughs> and to enhance the growth of a world-class group of scholars specializing in Latino and Latin American studies. The initiative has been quite successful in helping to increase the numbers of fac Latino faculty across the university. A three-year comparison of CUNY workforce statistics indicates that the number of Latino faculty increased by 40, which from 615 to 655 from 2011 to 2013. The combined percentage of Latino faculty across CUNY is now 8.7%. So to Professor Torrey's work is certainly worthy of recognition. The second initiative Vice Chancellor Waters shared with us is the CUNY Executive Leadership Program. The ELP is targeted at executive managers in the CUNY Executive Compensation Plan below the level of Vice President who are regarded as highly effective and who are being prepared for greater leadership roles within the university. The ELP has been offered five times since 2002. In that time, 80 CUNY executives have gone through the program. 59 are still with the university and 35 of them have advanced in their <coughs> career. Of the 20 participants now working elsewhere, 14 have advanced in rank. 23 CUNY executives are participating in the 2014 program, which began in April and continues through June. Mr. Chair, that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll turn next to the uh, Committee uh, on Academic Policy Program and Research. Uh, may I call on Trustee Wellington Chen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this April 7, 2014 meeting, the committee approved the following policy matters. Calendar number 5A, College of Staten Island, MS in Education and Advanced Certificate in TESO. This degree program and certificate will allow CSI to address the English language needs of Staten Island's growing population of non-English speaking immigrants. Calendar number 5B, John Jay College of Criminal Justice, BA in Sociology. The addition of this BA program is part of John Jay College's efforts to advance the strategic agenda of becoming a traditional liberal arts college with programs focusing on justice. Graduates of the program will be prepared for direct employment in areas such as human resources, social research, and social work. The program will provide excellent preparation for graduate work in areas such as law, business, and social work in addition to doctoral level education in sociology. Calendar number 5C, College of Staten Island, closing of the Department of Sociology, Anthropology, and Social Work, and establishment of the Department of Sociology and Anthropology and of the Department of Social Work. This action will separate the professional discipline of social work from the liberal arts discipline of sociology and anthropology. The social work and the graduate program has recently been accredited and, and the college is launching a brand new MSW program. Calendar number 5D, College of Staten Island, closing of the Department of Education and establishment of Department of Curriculum and Instruction and the Department of Educational Studies. The college recently established a school of education. This, the separation of the faculty and degree programs into academic departments by specialty is the next step in the school's development. Calendar number 5E, resolution to confer honorary degrees at Lehman College, Queens College, CUNY School of Law, Baruch College, Brooklyn College, Mega Evers College, <coughs> the Graduate School and University Center, Hunter College, John Jay College, and the Macaulay Honors College. Lehman College wishes to confer an honorary, doctorate, doc, honorary doctor of music upon Valerie Capers, musician and educator. An honorary doctorate of science upon Michael uh, J. Balick, vice president for 
Botanical Science at the New York Botanical Garden, and an honorary Doctor of Arts upon William Aguado, retired Executive Director of the Bronx Council on the Arts. Queens College wishes to confer an honorary Doctor of Science upon alumni Carol Jensen, nuclear waste specialist. CUNY Law School wishes to confer honorary Doctors of Law upon both Stephen B. Rosenfeld, Chair of the CUNY School of Law, Board of Visitors, and Sarah, Sarah Weddington, activist, lawyer, and author. Baruch College wishes to confer an honorary Doctor of Humane Letters upon alumnus Trevor Edwards, president of the Nike brand. Brooklyn College wishes to confer an honorary Doctor of Science upon alumnus Dr. Ohen Abba Boachi at J, Professor of Orthopedic Surgery at Weill Cornell Medical College, an honorary Doctor of Humane Letters upon Edward Corman, a federal judge, and an honorary Doctor of Letters upon Edward Danticat, writer, filmmaker, educator, and activist. Mecca Evers College wishes to confer an honorary Doctor of Humane Letters upon Albert Vaughn, a former New York City Council member. The Graduate School of and University Center wish to confer Doctors of Humane Letters upon Leonard Lauder, Chairman Emeritus of the Estee Lauder Foundation, and art collector Jan Vilcek, biomedical scientist, educator, inventor, and philanthropist, and Eugene Goodhart, Professor Emeritus of Brenda University and public intellectual. John Jay College wishes to confer an honorary degree, <coughs> honorary Doctor of Science upon Mario Jose Malina Pascal Enriquez, Nobel Prize winner for chemistry and honorary Doctor of Letters upon Charles Figley, researcher and professor of disaster mental health at Tulane University. The Macaulay Honors College wishes to confer an honorary Doctor of Humane Letters upon Harold E. Valmas, Doctor of National Cancer Institute. Item 5A through 5E were approved by the committee. I <coughs> recommend the approval of the board. In addition, I recommend the approval of a request from President of Hunter College, which was approved by the Central Office of Academic Affairs to confer an honorary <coughs> Doctor of Humane Letters upon Eleanor Clift, author and reporter at its commencement ceremony on May 27, 2014. This nomination was brought to the Central Office subsequent to the April 7, uh, 2014 CAPRA meeting, and the nominee's bio biographical information was sent to you by Interim Chancellor Kelly last week for your review and comments. The request is now being brought directly to the full board for approval. Uh, I will second uh, these various items from the committee. Are there questions on any of the items uh, that you uh, just heard presented? Uh, if not, <coughs> all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Abstentions? Uh, those items are all adopted. Information items. Dr. Rickley informed the committee that the university is looking into the colleges and schools to create a new master programs, master degrees programs. The university has well established master's degrees programs in education, business, and social work. And those programs have carried the day in their respective fields. It is now time for the colleges to develop new and creative programs that will speak to a different segment of the New York City workforce. We have already seen some efforts on this front and look forward to more. And that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we'll turn next to the uh, Committee on Facilities Planning and Management. I'd like to call on uh, the Committee Vice Chair Brian Oberfeld. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Board of Trustees Committee on Facilities Planning and Management considered four items at its meeting on April 7, 2014. These items are listed in this board meeting as calendar items 6A through 6D. 6A, Bronx Community College Student Center Fire Alarm Project. They're authorized the City University Construction Fund to execute a purchase order with the firm of Red Hawk Fire and Security to install a fire alarm system in the Roscoe Brown Student Center under an existing New York State Office of General Services contract. The contract <coughs> cost shall be 50% chargeable to New York State Capital Construction Funds, project number 2539909999, nine, 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 
for an amount not to exceed $700,000. The contracts will be subject to approval as the form by the University Office of the General Counsel. The fire alarm system at the Student Center building is not in compliance with current New York City building and fire codes and component parts are no longer available to maintain the system. The CUCF intends to upgrade the system to meet the new code requirements. Item 6B, LaGuardia Community College Center, three building replacement of facade. To accept the design for the center board three facade replacement at LaGuardia Community College. The design was prepared by Mitchell Gagola Architects who was selected through a DASNY request for proposal process. The design is for the full removal and replacement of the 168,000 square foot facade on the center, center three building. The new facade will be a high performance unitized curtain wall system consisting of extruded terracotta panels and high efficiency windows. The factory form panels of the system offer improved logistics and speed of installation, minimizing the disruption to the occupants of the building. The proposed curtain wall system provides durability, significant energy savings, and advanced waterproof design performance. The Board of Trustees of the City University of New York authorized the dormitory authority of the state of New York to complete the contract documents, bid and award the contracts, and supervise the construction of the project. The contract shall be subject to approval as the form by the University Office of the General Counsel. The project will replace Center 3 building's terracotta facade, which will be removed and replaced in stages over a 36-month period during which the building is occupied. Item 6C, the City University of New York Engineering Design Services Requirements Contracts. To authorize the City University Construction Fund to execute approximately 36 requirements contracts to be used on an as-needed basis for engineering design services. The contract shall be subject to approval as to form by the Fund's General Counsel. The firms to be awarded contracts are in the process of being selected. The Office of Facilities Planning, Construction and Management, FFPCM, has issued a new request for qualifications and is seeking to award approximately 36 separate requirement contracts to replace the expiring engineering design service requirement contracts currently in use. Item 6D, John Jay College of Criminal Justice, lease renewal for 845 10th Avenue, New York, New York to authorize the General Counsel to execute a 20-year lease renewal for approximately 59,759 rentable square feet of space at 843 10th Avenue, New York, New York. The lease shall be subject to approval as to form by the University Office of General Counsel. John Jay College has occupied classroom and office space at 845 10th Avenue since 2004 under a lease that expires in September 2014. This resolution will renew that lease. Note, in addition to the following resolution, in, uh, pardon me, in addition, the following resolution came in too late for prior review at the Board of Trustee Committee on Facilities Planning and Management meeting scheduled for April 7, 2014. Therefore, is being brought before the Board of Trustees for consideration. Item 6E, the City University of New York enacted capital budget adjustments fiscal year 2014 through 2015. To acknowledge that the New York State enacted budget for fiscal year 2014-15 requires a reduction in critical maintenance funding of 52 million for, from 258 million proposed in the governor's executive budget and that the City University of the New York Board of Trustees approves in compliance with the requirement of the enacted budget, the reduction in, to the executive budget in the amounts indicated and to the projects listed in the attachment. I hereby request your approval of these calendar items. This concludes the report of the Chair of the Committee on Facilities Planning and Management. Thank you. I'll second uh, those items. Are there questions uh, for the committee on any of these items? 
Uh, if not, uh, all in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? Uh, those items uh, are adopted. Uh, finally, I would like to move the award of the Salk Scholarships you'll find listed uh, on page 25 of your uh, uh, meeting, meeting uh, uh, books. May I have a second on the Salk Scholarships? Second. Are there any questions on these um, important scholarships? If not, uh, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? The Salk Scholarships um, uh, are adopted. Uh, before I uh, adjourn this meeting and we go into public, uh, into executive session, I would like to uh, point out that this afternoon's meeting uh, is the last regular board meeting where we will benefit from the superb leadership of our good friend uh, and interim chancellor. I know that I speak for every member of the board uh, in extending our collective appreciation and gratitude to you, Bill, uh, for your splendid, uh, for your splendid uh, service. Uh, uh, as such, I want to ask for the presentation of, of two resolutions uh, that we would consider together jointly. Uh, uh, let me first call on Vice Chairman uh, Philip Berry. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I will now read this resolution of appreciation for William P. Kelly. Whereas the interim chancellor, William P. Kelly, a distinguished scholar of American literature, has given the City University of New York 38 years of dedicated service, and whereas he began his career as a professor of English at Queens College, was invited to join the consortium of doctoral faculty at the CUNY Graduate Center, went on to serve as executive officer of the English department, and was subsequently recruited to become provost and senior vice president of the Graduate Center. And whereas his outstanding work as provost culminated in his appointment by the Board of Trustees as president of the CUNY Graduate Center in 2005, a position he held until the board appointed him as interim chancellor of the City University of New York effective July 1st, 2013. And whereas interim Chancellor Kelly also serves as chairman of the Simon Guggenheim Memorial Foundation and as chairman of the CUNY Research Foundation, was a Fulbright Fellow, directed the CUNY Paris Exchange Program for many years, was a recipient in 2003 of the Chevalier des Arts de Lutte Palme Académique, whereas during his term as provost and senior vice president, enrollment at the Graduate Center increased by 20%. The faculty was enriched by the recruitment of more than 40 internationally renowned scholars, including 23 university, uh, in, including 23 uh, university professorships, grants, and contracts, revenue doubled, student financial support also tripled. Uh, Dr. Kelly launched several ongoing public programs that feature leaders in culture, arts, uh, letters, economics, and science, and that attract thousands of audience uh, members to the Graduate Center annually. And whereas, as president of the Graduate Center, the CUNY Graduate Center, Dr. Kelly raised $100 million in outside funding, recruited 10 new members to the Foundation Board of Trustees, continued to recruit scholars of international renown to the faculty, developed nationally competitive five-year doctoral fellowship packages, launched the Advanced Research Collaborative to promote interdisciplinary research and international scholarship, and secured the institution's first student faculty housing in New York City. And whereas, as interim chancellor of the City University of New York, Dr. Kelly has led with distinction, dignity, and clarity of purpose, contributing to CUNY's momentum in numerous areas to ensure the university's stability and future success. And whereas, uh, interim chancellor Kelly began a series of programs designed to 
create greater commerce and unity across CUNY's campuses, including the launch of the Faculty Leadership Academy to support and train faculty interested in assuming greater leadership responsibilities, the development of the Community College Research Program to assist community college faculty committed to research, the creation of a series of cross-campus initiatives bringing together scholars and faculty from multiple campuses to learn more about each other's work, and the initiation of a program to bring performing artists in residence to multiple CUNY campuses. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York extends its profound gratitude for Chancellor, Interim Chancellor William P. Kelly, for his exemplary leadership in all of the faculty and senior administrative positions he has held thus far, and in particular, his inspiring service to Queens College, the Graduate Center, and the university as a whole, for his outstanding service as a professor, mentor, and colleague who remains beloved by his students and colleagues and for elevating all of us with his breadth of knowledge, the depth of his compassion, and the joy of his wit to the <coughs> integral benefit of the university and the city and the state. We thank you. <laughs> to take up uh, a second resolution jointly, <laughs> jointly with the first one, which uh, the, vice, uh, the vice chair just read. Uh, may I call on um, uh, uh, Trustee Valerie Beal to uh, uh, read the, the second resolution. Not as long. <laughs> Resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York approve the naming of the William P. Kelly Skylight Room at the Graduate School and University Center. <laughs> Under the inspired leadership of Dr. Kelly during his seven years as provost and eight years as president, the CUNY Graduate Center achieved significant growth and academic prominence, attracted world-renowned faculty, greatly enhanced financial support for students, and broadened the rich array, array of public programs <coughs> offered at its beautiful landmark building on Fifth Avenue. Dr. Kelly developed programs <laughs> featuring leaders in cultural, arts and letters, economics and science, attracting thousands of audience members annually, further enhancing the CUNY Graduate Center's standing in the marketplace of ideas and careers. Therefore, in deep appreciation of the extraordinary contributions that William P. Kelly has made to the CUNY Graduate Center and the City University of New York, particularly during his distinguished service as president provost, and interim chancellor, the Board of Trustees deems it appropriate that the beautiful conference space currently known as the Skylight Room, with its soaring windows facing the Empire State <laughs> Building, be renamed the William P. Kelly Skylight Room. Second, uh, both of these <laughs> resolutions. Uh, is there any uh, discussion or comment? If not, all in favor of the two resolutions, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed abstentions? I may have just a word. I don't do real well in these situations, but I'm 
touched, surprised, astonished, grateful. I'd like to know who wrote this stuff. Uh, Want to hire him or her to follow me around? I'm afraid that she forgot or he forgot the part where I cured cancer. Uh, <laughs> but otherwise, a pretty comprehensive account. Um, you could not have chosen a better way to honor me than uh, naming that space at the Graduate Center. I'm humbled, uh, would normally find a way to say no, but uh, I take it as a tribute to all of the really good people who worked really hard to make great things happen at the Graduate Center. I want to thank all of you. Thank you for your collegiality, for your friendship, and thank you for this honor. I'm deeply, deeply touched. Uh, that concludes the business of the first of our public meetings of the day. We'll now go into executive session. We do anticipate reconvening in a second public, uh, public session. I'd like to uh, call this uh, second public session of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York to order. Um, we have uh, one resolution uh, to uh, consider. Uh, and I will uh, introduce it and ask for a second uh, before opening the floor to discussion. Uh, the resolution uh, concerns the designation uh, of a president of the College of Staten Island, and it is resolved that William J. Fritz be designated president of the College of Staten Island, effective May 6, 2014, at a compensation to be recommended by the chancellor to the board subject to financial ability. Dr. Fritz has served as interim president of the college since August 2012 after consultation uh, with uh, many members of the Staten Island community. The chancellor uh, has determined that it would be in the best interest of the college and the university to appoint uh, Dr. Fritz uh, as uh, a president. Under his leader, the leadership, the college has established a school of business, a school of health, a school of education, a master's in social work degree, and a bachelor of arts uh, in geography. Uh, before uh, his position as interim, as interim president, Dr. Fritz was appointed provost, senior vice president of the college after a national search, and had previously served as the senior associate provost for academic programs at the Georgia State University. Uh, Dr. Fritz is an internationally recognized field ge geologist has published more than 50 articles and books on sedimentation around modern and ancient explosive volcanoes, sedimentology, stratigraphy, and paleobotany. An expert on storm surges, Dr. Fritz has gathered an interdisciplinary group of college faculty members to conduct long-term research on the impact of future superstorms uh, in the New York area. So that's the resolution to appoint Dr. Fritz as the permanent president of the College of Staten Island. May I have a second? Second. second. Uh, is there uh, any uh, discussion? We had a thorough discussion of this uh, in, the, uh, in the executive session. Uh, is there anything further that anyone wants to say? Are you ready for the question? Yes. All those who favor this appointment, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Abstentions? The appointment is made. Congratulations. OK, thank you. I understand I have a, a, a few minutes to address the group. I'll try to make it brief. Uh, I really start, want to start off by thanking Board uh, Chair Benno Schmidt, uh, Vice Chair Philip Berry, uh, Interim Chancellor Bill Kelly, and of course, uh, Chancellor-designate uh, J.B. Milliken, distinguished uh, members of the board uh, uh, for their confidence in appointing me president of the College of Staten Island. Uh, I also want to thank publicly the, the CSI faculty, staff, and students, as well as the extended CSI uh, family, including the Staten Island elected delegation, our alumni, and the CSI Foundation for their support uh, over the past two years. Uh, you know, I, I, it's just uh, deeply uh, humbled and honored uh, for your uh, vote of confidence in allowing me to continue to serve uh, CSI as the seventh president, uh, dating back to the establishment of our predecessor institution, Staten Island Community College in 1956 and Richmond College in 1965, 
uh, merging to finally uh, form the College of Staten Island in uh, 1976, and, and, and I'm just deeply proud of the, that history. Uh, the, the, the last two years, we've implemented uh, many items that were set forth in the strategic uh, plan that were developed uh, with extensive faculty consultation on uh, campus of many voices, one vision. Uh, consistent with that, we created uh, three new schools, uh, business, education, and health, uh, 10 new academic departments with four of those that were just uh, voted on uh, uh, earlier this evening. Of course, the residence halls, the high performance uh, computing uh, center, uh, which will be our first new academic space since we came to the Willowbrook site. And I just want to take this opportunity again to thank the many uh, faculty and staff that have worked so hard on what I consider to be a, a, just an extremely exciting uh, a history at, at, at the college. Uh, you know, the excitement, I think, is uh, gaining uh, palpable uh, momentum, uh, Business Insider, uh, just uh, released their uh, rankings as what they called uh, you know, the most underrated schools in the country, but they were looking at ones that challenged the notion that just because you have broad access uh, doesn't mean that, that, that the quality is not there. And there were a lot of very prestigious uh, colleges and, uh, you know, on that list, including uh, the College of Staten Island uh, for the state of uh, New York. Uh, my entire career in higher education uh, following a completion of my doctoral degree has been at public access institutions, ones that uh, are dedicated to providing the highest quality education to everyone. And I'm really proud of the noble mission of the City University of New York and look forward to continuing uh, work at the College of Staten Island. I'm proud of CSI's world-class faculty whose research and scholarship I think are second to none. I'm proud of our dedicated staff. And most of all, I'm really proud of our uh, wonderful stu uh, students that we have, not only at the college, but throughout the City University of New York. Uh, so on their behalf, and with the confidence and faith that you've expressed in me tonight, I remain committed to advancing the mission, vision, and values of the College of Staten Island and of the City University of New York. Thank you. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the public work of, the, of this uh, board meeting. We're adjourned.